Okay, today let's talk about the cardiovascular system, or we might call it the circulatory system. And this is made up of the heart, which is our pump, and then the vessels. Our system is a closed system, whereas insects and some organisms would have an open system where the blood is not always contained within vessels. Okay, now there's a lot going on in this picture, but what I want us to focus on right now is, first of all, what is the actual overall point or job of the cardiovascular system? And I want you to recall that in the respiratory system lecture, what we learned about was the job of the respiratory system is really gas exchange, right? To take in a fresh supply of oxygen to, and to get rid of the waste product carbon dioxide. And the reason for this is because cells and tissues are always going to need a fresh supply of oxygen and they all are continually making a waste of carbon dioxide. So if the lungs then, if their job is to exchange the gases, well, the cardiovascular system's job is to transport those between the lungs and all the cells and tissues of the body. So what are they transporting? Well, we already talked about oxygen and we already talked about carbon dioxide. Those are the gases, but they're doing more than that. Um, when we eat food, right, and it's digested, the, the nutrient particles need to also get to all the cells, and therefore the blood can carry those nutrients. The blood can carry other wastes besides just carbon dioxide waste, and as we'll learn in another lecture, hormones are actually circulated through the body in the blood system. And finally, we have immune cells to help prevent disease and fight disease, and those can circulate also through our blood. Now, the heart serves as the pump. In other words, if you want to circulate something, right, whether you're talking about a swimming pool or a body, you have to have a pump in order to do that. And then we have vessels. So again, ours is a closed circulatory system, so the blood is going to stay within these vessels. And we have three types of vessels. Arteries. So if we think about arteries starts with A, those are the vessels that carry blood away from the heart. Veins are going to do the opposite. Veins are going to return blood back to the heart. And the capillaries are sort of those in between, okay? In between the arteries and the veins are the capillaries. Now, what's important about the capillaries? Well, this is where the exchange is actually taking place. In other words, diffusion between what's inside this blood vessel, the capillary, and the actual cells and tissues. So we're talking about gas exchange, nutrient exchange, and waste exchange only happens in the capillaries. So it doesn't happen with between arteries and tissues or between veins and tissues. It happens for capillaries and tissues. Now, our system is broken up into two different circuits. So in other words, the, when our heart pumps, one circuit actually carries blood to our entire body. That's called the systemic circuit. And one circuit actually pumps blood to the lungs. So we're going to look at this um, in more detail as we go forward. But what I want you to see in this image, right, we have our heart, which is our pump. And then we have vessels, right, that go to our head, to our chest, to our abdomen, to our upper and lower extremities. Now let's, let's dig in a little bit um, to the heart and talk about um, some of the anatomy of the heart. And what I want you to think about is we're just going to divide the heart sort of right here, okay, into left and right sides. And remember, when we say left and right, it's as if we're looking at a person facing us. So over here, right, would be the left, and over here would be the right. So we have a four-chambered heart, which means we have four sort of different places that hold blood in this pump. Two of those chambers are atria and two of those chambers are ventricles. So we have a right atrium. So atrium is singular. Atria would be plural. We have a right atrium chamber and we have a left atrium chamber and we have a right ventricle chamber and a left ventricle chamber. Now, with between each of these chambers, we have valves. So if you, if you know anything about plumbing, you know that there are valves sometimes used um, to prevent water from flowing where you don't want it to go. 
Okay, so that these valves are used in that way in the heart or serve that purpose in the heart to prevent v- blood from flowing backwards. So remember the heart is a pump and the heart is made of specific types of muscle cells, right? Cardiac muscle cells. And when these cardiac muscle cells contract, right, that is going to cause blood to flow. Now, when blood flows from the atrium, so let's just start at the right side, from the atrium into the ventricle, and I'm going to use, I'm going to use green. Let's see if green shows up. When blood flows this direction, there is a valve between the atrium and the ventricle called the tricuspid valve. Now, what happens once blood flows through, in order for this blood not to go back up into the atrium, this valve will close off, okay, to prevent blood from flowing backwards. Now, on the left side, the same thing happens. This valve between the left atrium and the left ventricle is called the mitral or the bicuspid valve. Same thing, it prevents blood from flowing back into the atrium. Now, additionally, there are two other valves that are between the ventricles and the main vessel that blood will flow to from that ventricle. So I'm going to erase the green I have here. And I'm going to try a little bit different color. I'm just going to use black. So when the right ventricle contracts, it will force blood through this main vessel right here that's called the pulmonary trunk. Okay, I'm going to write up here. Now, pulmonary means lung. Okay, so this is the pulmonary trunk here. Notice that what it's going to do is branch off into a left and right pulmonary artery. Remember, artery means blood away from the heart. So when the right ventricle pumps or contracts, the blood will be pushed through the pulmonary trunk to the left and right pulmonary arteries. Now, there is also a valve right here to prevent the backflow of blood. This is called the pulmonary valve, okay? On the left side, when the left ventricle contracts, it is going to force blood or pump blood through this vessel so it goes behind the pulmonary trunk, okay, and it curves around. This is called the aorta. This is going to supply blood to the entire body, your head, your neck, your arms, your legs, your thorax, your abdomen, everything, okay? Now, again, there is a valve here to prevent backflow of blood, and it is called the aortic valve. Now, what I want us to think about is we're going to walk through the flow of blood, but what I want you to recognize is when the heart contracts, both of the atria are going to contract at the same time, and both of the ventricles are going to contract at the same time. However, I want us to just look at the pathway or the flow of blood as it goes through the chambers um, and the vessels. So we're just going to, just for fun, we're going to start in the right atrium and we're going to walk through the flow of blood. But just keep in mind that what would really be happening is the right and left atria would be contracting at the same time, pushing blood into both ventricles and those would contract at the same time. We're going to look at them one at a time just for, to keep things a little more clear. All right. So we're going to start right here in the right atrium. Let's say this is filled with blood. The right atrium will contract force blood into the right ventricle. Then the right ventricle will contract. And remember, blood can't go this way, right? Because that valve will be closed. So when the right ventricle contracts, blood will be forced through the pulmonary trunk, okay, to the left and right pulmonary artery. Now, pulmonary means lungs, so that is carrying blood to the left and right lung, and we've already learned that gas exchange is going to happen there, right? So that blood then is going to be oxygenated when it comes back or returns from the lungs. Now, how does blood come back from the lungs? Well, it comes back through these pulmonary veins. So we have two on the left side, and we have two on the right side. And these pulmonary veins are 
all going to carry blood into the left atrium. So now we have oxygenated blood that's come from the lungs in the left atrium. When it contracts, it will force blood to the left ventricle. And when the left ventricle contracts, it will push blood through the aorta. Remember, it can't go back up to the left atrium because of the valve that will be closed there. Now, what about the aorta? The aorta then will branch off, okay, into vessels that will go to the head and neck. And the aorta will then, it goes around behind the heart. You see it coming out here. It will carry blood to all of the cells and tissues of the body. Now, when the blood arrives, there will be gas exchange between the capillaries, right, and the cells and tissues of the body. And then the blood returning from the cells and tissues of the body will not will no longer be oxygenated, correct? Because the oxygen will then be utilized by the cells and tissues. All of the veins then that are returning from all the cells and tissues of the body will come into two places, either into the inferior vena cava or the superior vena cava. Both of those then will return blood back where we started in our little process to the right atrium. Now I'm going to get rid of some of this because it's gotten very busy. But I want us, now that we've walked through this, I want us to see that we have colors on this heart. Um, red is usually going to represent oxygenated blood. And blue is typically going to represent deoxygenated blood. So we see that the right atrium and right ventricles are blue, right? Because that contains blood returning from the body that is deoxygenated. And the left atrium and the left ventricle are designated red because those have oxygenated blood that is returned from the lungs where it's picked up a new supply of oxygen. Now we've already touched on what, what we could call the eight great vessels leaving the heart or coming to the heart. We've already talked about the aorta. The aorta is where blood is pumped from the left ventricle and it carries oxygenated blood to the cells and tissues of the body. The superior and inferior vena cava, so here's the superior, here's the inferior, those are receiving blood from all the veins of the tissues and cells of the body. And because the oxygen has been dropped off at the cells and tissues, this will be deoxygenated blood. Now, the pulmonary trunk we talked about, this is receiving blood from the right ventricle, and it will carry blood to both the left and the right lung where gas exchange will occur. So because it is leaving the right ventricle, it is deoxygenated blood as it's traveling through the pulmonary trunk and pulmonary arteries. And then we have the pulmonary veins. These are the veins that are returning blood back to the heart from the lungs, and this will be carrying oxygenated blood, right? Because it's just picked up oxygen from the alveoli, from, from the lungs. Now, most arteries we think of as being oxygen rich that are carrying blood away from the heart. However, um, the pulmonary trunk and pulmonary arteries are not oxygen rich, right? Because they're going to the lungs to pick up oxygen. The same thing with the pulmonary veins. Those are oxygen rich veins, even though the majority of veins in the body returning to the heart are oxygen deficient. <laughs> 